Everything that's going on today was going on 18 years ago in California in my old house uh, on, on Stanford campus. But the only thing is that it's 18 years later. And that makes a difference because the ed school people who tried to do exactly what they're doing now with Common Core in California in 1992, uh, those people have learned from their mistakes. So it is proportionately much tougher now to fix things than it was then. That being the case, let me, uh, let me explain that uh, over the last 150 years, uh, the, the high schools have acted as a buffer between K-8 and, and our colleges. And our colleges, of course, more so today than, than 30, 40, 50 years ago, our colleges are increasingly the thing that, that determines our economic welfare. Our economic well-being just depends more and more and more on the colleges and their economic and educational health. So, as I said, uh, for years, until 1990s, uh, we were defended by the high schools. But they did one thing right, the educators. Uh, they got uh, NSF to fund the creation of new curricula for the high schools, above all, and for the uh, K, through, K through 8 as well. Uh, some of these some of these programs for the high schools, Core Plus, uh, College Preparatory Math, IMP, Interactive Math Project, uh, those, those were something like 60, 80 percent of the high schools in California were using one of those three programs uh, by the time I got onto the scene in 1996, 97. It had been Long enough, because at the high school, what happens to the high school is the effect of the high school and the colleges is pretty fast. So almost immediately, the, the colleges began to notice a decline in the preparation of students. And uh, that's the reason that the college, that the regular college faculty were so instrumental in California in fighting. But we didn't succeed in every way. And I'm a mathematician, so I'm going to talk about mathematics. So today we have this wonderful geometry has no proofs. Well, that's what geometry was when I was a kid, was learning how to reason precisely and accurately with given data, and proofs were the essential component of it, the one thing you ought to have taken away from it. And of course, this is a little technical. I had to put something like that in there. Uh, Algebra without conics and logarithms, uh, neither one of which I'm sure anybody in the audience cares much about. But believe me, if you're, going, if you're doing engineering, you're doing the hard sciences, you're doing almost any of these uh, basic fields that, are, that, are, uh, you know, that de de depend on, 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 on real data analysis, these are critical. And uh, this large number of NSF-funded curricula have even less content than that. Now, core standards is a natural evolution, and it goes even further, and dramatically weakens the high school courses needed for admission now to the state universities. I, I distinguish here carefully state universities, public universities, from the elite private universities, such as Stanford. Uh, because it is the public schools that are influenced by uh, core standards and not the private schools. So what will happen, and it's already starting to, to, to happen, the difference in level between the state schools, which was minor when I entered the profession, the difference between the state public universities and the elite private schools has been increasing and increasing and increasing over the years. Uh, Stanford redefined itself uh, some six, eight years ago as the leading university of the Pacific Rim. It used to be the leading university of, of the uh, West, Western uh, United States. But now it's the Pacific Rim because more and more and more of our students are coming from East Asia and Russia and places like that. And 
right now, over two thirds of our graduate students in the hard sciences and, and, and engineering, the, all of the STEM areas, over two thirds of our graduate students are foreign born. And it, at most schools, it's even more than that. So now let's look at, at Common Core. What does Common Core do? Well, Common Core defines college readiness as past Algebra 2. Well, that is a very weak standard. That is a very weak standard. The next course over trigonometry, the course over pre-calculus, if a student intending to go into a STEM area enters the uh, college world either through the community colleges or through the regular public universities or, or the private ones, enters with a preparation where the highest math course they took was uh, Algebra 2, then they're going to have to take a remedial course, trigonometry uh, or, or pre-calculus, uh, before they can do anything else. And something like 2.1% of such STEM-intending students ever manage to get a, a degree in, in a STEM area, 2.1%. So if, we, if you're focused on STEM, then this thing says zero output. So we'll look at Algebra 2, and this is some data from Tom Loveless very recently. Uh, here's the, the way the, we've had an increase among all students from 44% uh, of students who took Algebra 2 and passed it, 44% uh, of high school graduates to 76% today. Uh, and that looks very favorable. If, if Algebra 2 is, is really the college readiness standard, that's saying that more and more of these students are getting college ready. And certainly that's the case if you believe core standards. Now let's look at the scores on one of the very, very few standardized tests that we can, can compare year by year by year, the NAEP, the uh, National Assessment of Educational Progress. Uh, and let, this is the data from the same, the same period, from 1986 to, uh, to uh, 2012, you see what happens. As the increase in the students going through Algebra 2, you get a dramatic decrease in outcomes. So if it was college ready in, in 1990, why do you think it's college ready now unless the colleges lower their standards? And that's the root of the current concern for me is that with this going on, the colleges are going to be forced to lower their entry standards and indeed their first and second year courses. And that's going to be a disaster for the country. Uh, I want to go through and I want to show you that there are really two worlds out there in mathematics. Um, and, and, and on the validation committee, which oversaw the development of core standards, this was especially the case. Uh, there are the, there's the world of the, of the math educators who may have only had a core, their highest course may have only been college algebra or something, and yet they're called math educators. Uh, be, and they typically get their degrees in psychology. Uh, <laughs> that is bachelors. Their, math, their PhDs are in, in uh, mathematics education, not mathematics. And so we had, um, I believe, six of them on the validation committee. Here was Professor Bill Schmidt uh, at Michigan State. And what is he doing? Um, Education Policy Center, Michigan State University, uh, PhD, is, is actually an EDD, E-D-D. Feng Shui Shi, who's uh, got her degree, I guess, somewhere in the U.S., got her degree, again, in, in, in an education uh, degree. And that's a little more subtle because she's in, she's in a math department uh, in Taiwan, at National Taiwan University, but in that math department, her specialty is mathematics learning, mathematics teaching, and, ma and teacher education. And ex as I say, she has a degree uh, education degree in mathematics. Next, Sarah Bird. Oh, yes. Mathematics teacher 
with, the element, with an elementary school district in Arizona, well and good, a teacher can be a, a superb resource, there's no question of that, but it's nice if they've had more than two years of college math. Jerry Comfrey, PH, uh, ed, education doctorate in, ma in math education, professor of, math, mathematic, of educational innovation uh, in the College of Education at North Carolina State. Jeremy Kilpatrick, uh, he's embarrassingly enough, he got his education degree um, in the mathematics at Stanford, but in the education school, not the math department. Uh, Norman Webb, same story. Statistics, educational statistics, that's his PhD in the, edu in, in the education, again at Stanford. Um, okay, there were two other members of the validation committee. Dylan William, he has a degree in, in, uh, in education, but he also has, has degrees in mathematics. He's a pure applied mathematician who specializes in, in, in the issues in mathematical measurement in, in testing. So he's an applied mathematician. The other one on the, on the validation committee was me. The difference between these and what we just went through, the six and now the last two, I think speaks for itself. That there's two different worlds here. And the objectives of these worlds are completely different. And that's shown in what happened with these two. Uh, Dylan and I were the only ones in mathematics, but we're the only ones in mathematics, in the mathematics group on validation, who voted against it. Because both of us understood very well that what was going on there was, if anything, anti-mathematical.